Hello and welcome, this is Lino Tadros and in this video and probably the following one as well, I would like to show you how to bring in extra nodes, extra uh, tools that you can use inside of Promflow for Azure AI Foundry. It's not true that you only have the more tools where you can actually use SERP API and, uh, and bring in some vectorization from Azure AI Search. There is a lot more that you can actually do. So I'll show you a couple in the first video how to bring them in really quickly uh, that will add a lot of value to your nodes and to your tools inside of Promflow. And then in the next few videos, we'll also show you how to, uh, to deal with PostgreSQL and how to deal with uh, MongoDB and Core um, and do a lot more actually with Azure DBs inside of the Promflow. And then later on, we will get a little bit more advanced and we will create our own tools that we can add to the list inside of Promflow for Azure AI Foundry. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see in here, I'm not going to uh, take the time to create a new project in Azure AI Foundry. There are a lot of videos that I have previous to that that you can see how we can create a hub and a project uh, and do all of that stuff. But for right now, I just have a full-blown AI hub, AI project, AI services and the storage and my vault as well for all my secrets already deployed to East US 2. And let's go ahead and open up the project, for instance, in here. And I'm going to click Launch the Studio. And once I do that, I will be able to get to the point where um, I will need to deploy some models. I already did that for us, so we can do that quickly. I have GPT-40 already uh, deployed. If not, you can click on Deploy Model and deploy whatever model available for you, whether it's GPT-based or, or something else as well. The important part for me that I wanted to show you in this video is that if when I click on the prompt flow in here, I will go ahead and create one. It could be a, a standard flow or a chat flow. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to create a chat flow. We'll say create. We'll give it a name. We'll call it, for instance, uh, Lino Flow. Okay. And we will say go for it. And then when we will create that in the user interface, it's important for us to take a look at what would be available under the more tools. Of course, more tools will not be enabled until you start a compute session. So you need to click on that first, and that might actually take a minute to three minutes max. In my case, uh, it takes about a minute and a half or though um, for, uh, for us to actually get the compute session uh, serverless automatically uh, inside of machine learning for Azure. And with that, I would be able to see the more tools coming enabled and I'll see what's available for me. So let me go ahead and stop this and come back in a minute when this is done. And indeed, it actually took less than a minute. And now when I click on more tools, notice of all the different tools. These are Asian-based tools that you can actually use. You can use content safety, which will add another node that you can configure. We can do the embedding. We can use whichever model you would like to use. The default is the ADA002, but you can deploy more uh, embedding models and being able to use them as well. I can use open model LLM, SERP API, like we did in a previous video. So you can take a look how I used all of these tools in previous video, including ReRank. I actually used pretty much all of them to show you in previous videos. But the question is, are these the only ones available? And the answer is no, actually, you can actually have a couple of them are available directly from the repositories of the Power uh, the, the Prompt Flow. Also, there are some hidden ones still in preview that are excellent, like the PF Azure DB, for instance, you can work with uh, with the MongoDB uh, under the uh, under the, uh, the, uh, the Cosmos DB umbrella. Of course, you can use Core, you can use PostgreSQL, you can use uh, MongoDB under the Cosmos DB umbrella as well to do all your vectorization if you'd like as well. All right, so the question now is how can I add to this uh, more tools? All right, let me close this down. And if you go all the way to the top where it says files in here, usually it's going to be collapsed for you. You click on that and you will see actually behind the scene all the different YAML files for the DAG that we're looking at visually in here. We will see the meta for the YAML. And the most important thing, of course, for us is this requirements.txt, which I click on it will be completely empty. That means uh, all the different packages in Python that are loaded are automatically loaded inside of that compute session that I started. It doesn't really mean that it's empty. There are hundreds of different packages that already have been loaded inside of this compute session. What I can do in here, I can put the name of specific packages that are available publicly that it can get installed automatically inside of that compute session as well. Where do I know what these packages are? Let's go ahead and get that. I'm going to open up another tab. I'm going to go ahead and put in 
the main index.html of the Microsoft GitHub I.O. for the prompt flow. So this is all the documentations. There are some excellent tutorials in here for you to learn more about prompt flow. But I'm more interested in the last one in here uh, that says integrations. If I click on that, you will notice there are some custom tools available already. Uh, the prompt flow Azure AI language and the LLM Linga uh, prompt flow. These are two. That means probably there are, <laughs> will be dozens and dozens available on GitHub if you search for them. Uh, or you can actually create your own. And one of the videos in the future will, uh, will be for us to create completely custom tool that I can actually integrate inside of there as well. And we'll see all the calls that have to be made to the SDK for prompt flow to make a correct implemented um, uh, tool for that. Sounds good? All right, let's take a look at this package. I'm going to copy the name of that package here into the clipboard, control C. But before I go use it, I want you to see what it is. It's actually excellent. It does bring a lot of value. It has all of these things implemented in it. Uh, if you're familiar with Azure AI Search, you have abstractive summarization, extractive summarization, conversation summarization. More importantly, like the PII, entity recognition and conversational PII, in case you're working for a medical company or a fintech company that is very, very... Uh, uh, worried definitely about personal information and so on. Also sentiment analysis, translator, all of these things are going to be available for you if you end up using that package and it will add all of them, believe it or not, into the nodes for more tools inside of the prompt flow. Alrighty, so come back here uh, into the uh, the Microsoft GitHub I.O. prompt flow and take a look at each and every single one. There will be a lot of different information in here for you to learn how to deal with each and every single one of them. It's actually pretty easy. It's not that difficult. So I'm going to show you how we do it. We'll come back in here and I'm going to go ahead and paste that name of the package that I copy and pasted, which will be called prompt flow dash azure dash ai dash language alrighty and i want to make sure that this compute session gets restarted with the new requirement for that specific package so i'm going to say instead of save i'm going to say save and install let's click on that and now we're going to go ahead and be patient this will restart this in a few seconds and it might take a minute or two to restart plus it will actually install the prompt flow azure ai language with it as well all right, that happened really, really fast. That's great. Let me close this guy. And I want to go back to the flow and see if that actually really took place. I'm going to say more tools. Oh my goodness, look at that. The old ones are still here, but now there is an Azure AI language at the bottom that has everything that you've seen in the documentation page, the abstractive summarization, the conversation summarization. So I add so many different tools for me right now that I can actually use. In this video, I'm not going to actually use each and every single one of them. I just wanted to show you how to bring them in. In another video, we'll probably show you how to do abstractive summarization and, and the PII, uh, entity recognition. These are very important ones. But if you ever want to just test one of them, just click on, let's say, abstractive summarization. That will add a node. We'll call it, for instance, test. Uh, we'll, we'll say add that node and you'll notice it will add all the different inputs that are required for this specific tool to work. That means I will have to first of all go create an Azure AI service connection and connect to it from right here. I can also uh, upload a document for instance inside of my chat to be able to, uh, to load a document of whatever kind it is. It could be a PDF, uh, Word document. Um, Excel spreadsheet, whatever. I can set the maximum retries. Remember, the, uh, the that's for the HTTP request. Five is the uh, is the default, but you can definitely change it. Same thing with the maximum wait for the timeout is sixty seconds, one minute. Uh, but you can change it as well. The parse response, uh, whether you would like to parse the entire response or just get the uh, the most important part of what's coming back from the JSON, alrighty? This is the query, like all the others, uh, usually the query is something that you will be pointing in to the input question, for instance, and so on. And then the summarization lens, instead of specifying that in bytes or, or characters or whatever, we make it very easy, short, medium, or long to see how big of the summarization lens that you would like to bring back. So this will make it extremely easy to be able to bring the, the value of Azure AI Search Abstractive Summarization directly into your flow as well. All right, let's go ahead and delete this one. And I'd like to bring in the other one. Let me go in here again and I will click this time on the LLM. Uh, let me just get the package name first. There it is. That's going to be the package name that I'm going to need. Control C. And the question is, what is this uh, LLM Linga? Well, um, it's a prompt compression tool. It enables you to speed up large language model inferencing and it enhances the large language model's perception of key information. 
it compresses the prompt with minimal performance loss so pretty much it will have three different inputs when you install this uh, it will have the prompt that it needs to compress it will need the connection for instance to the llm maybe you want to use for this one a llama uh, 3.2 or you want a 5.4 or something like that other than the one that you're using directly for everything else inside of your flow and finally the rate which is a float number that the maximum compression rate target to be achieved let's go ahead and see how we can install that I'm going to go back to my requirements.txt. We know already we have the language one already there. We push enter and I'm going to bring in my LLM Linga prompt flow for the compression of the prompt. Let's go ahead and uh, do it. We'll say save and install. And we will come back once this compute session uh, starts and hopefully it will finish soon. And indeed it took less than 20 seconds, which is great. I'm going to close this guy down. And now if I go back to more tools, remember the compute session has to be running. If I say more tools, other than the ones that you've seen before based on the Azure AI search language, I have now a new one all the way at the top called Linga Prompt Compression Tool. So if I add this one, let's click on it. These are, uh, let me give it a name, we'll call it test for right now, we'll say add this. These have the three different inputs that I told you about. The first one will be the connection to, let's say, uh, uh, Llama 3.2 or um, something from Hugging uh, Face or something like 5.4 or whatever that you have deployed and you have access to as a connection from the system. The prompt is a string. That's the one that you're interested in compressing in case there is a lot of uh, prompt uh, engineering going on. And also the rate in here and the rate will automatically be uh, uh, a double that you probably have it as an input as well that you did define all the way to the top. The default is 0 0.5 for the compression rate as well. See how cool that is? So all of these things you can add definitely to your uh, tools available inside of there and this list could end up being hundreds of different tools in here if you want to between the one available publicly between ones that you would like to experiment with from github from different uh, providers and also the ones that we will create ourselves i will create one here called lino that will be uh, following the uh, the SDK for the Python SDK for the prompt flow and I can create my own if I want to. Sounds good. Hopefully this was a useful video for you to understand how you can actually use requirements.txt to be able to add all the different uh, tools available using their Python packages and it will automatically add that. One last thing before I let you go on this video. There are very, very... Um, important ones still in preview that you might feel the if you search the internet for instance you might find the word pf azure db all over the place as of the end of january of 2025 i cannot unfortunately come in here and say pf dash azure db and if i go ahead and say save and install um, of course the first two got installed already but this one will have some dependency packages that will cause problems so I find myself always having to do this locally on my machine in my own environment as the uh, as the compute session, not the one that comes automatically with the uh, with prompt flow inside of the Azure AI Foundry itself. Of course, that will get fixed in the future. You will be able to say PF Azure DB and uh, install that and then the tools will have all the different cosmos db whether it's core mongodb postgres sql all of them will be available for you automatically but for right now uh, in the next video i'll show you how to deal with the pf azure db but it will need to happen at least for right now on your own machine thanks for uh, for watching please remember to like if you did and also uh, subscribe so you can actually get notified about all the new videos coming up soon thank you so much